NASA sees their first ever Mars avalanche. The first ever NASA photo shows brown or tan clouds billowing, billowing away from the foot of a steep ravine. The high resolution imaging experiment on NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbital took the photograph February 19th. The image shows tan clouds billowing away from the foot of a towering slope where ice and dust have just cascaded down. The camera was tracking seasonal changes on Mars when it inadvertently caught the avalanche on film. One of the scientists of the HIRISE mission said, It really, really surprised me. It's great to see something so dynamic on Mars. A lot of what we see there hasn't changed for millions of years. But now they have seen something that has similarities to what happens on Earth. In other words, Mars does have a climate, it does have seasons, it does have water, and it is the new future Earth of the new Garden of Eden in the future. Man's destis, destiny, yes, man's destiny, to colonize Mars someday. Because people are always reproducing more and more. It's, prob it's part of the problem now, what's uh, happening on Earth. Too many people on too small a space. Since people or humankind are always increasing, adding to the numbers, it's a logical step in human evolution for humankind. Yes. Humankind must eventually go to Mars it's a stepping stone to the stars. The full image reveals features as small as a desk and a strip of terrain 3.7 miles, 6 kilometers wide and more than 10 times that long at 84 degrees north latitude. Reddish layers known to be rich in water ice make up the face of a steep slope 2,300 feet or 700 meters tall running the length of the image. Mars North Pole is covered by a cap of ice and it even snows there just like on Earth. Yes, Mars is similar to Earth in some ways, in some respects. The scientists suspect that more ice and dust probably makes up the material that fell from the upper portion of the escarpment. If blocks of ice broke loose and fell, we expect the water in them will be changing from solid to gas, said Patrick Russell of the University of Bern, Switzerland, a H-I-R-I-S-E team collaborator. We'll be watching to see if blocks and other debris shrink in size. What we might learn could give us a better understanding of part of the water cycle on Mars. What set off the landslide and whether such events are common on Mars is something else the team will be looking at. We don't know exactly what set off these landslides, Russell said. We plan to take more images of the site through the changing Martian seasons to see if this kind of avalanche happens all year or is restricted to just early spring. Anyway, there's a NASA mission on its way to Mars. It's on its way to Mars right now. It was launched in August of 2007 and will be arriving on Mars in May of 2008. The plan is expected to return unprecedented unprecedented 
Mars landing coverage. Robotic paparazzi shadow Mars landing. There are three robotic orbiters around the planet Mars and they are adjusting their flight paths to track an incoming NASA probe due to land on the red planet in late May. The plan marks the first time that three orbiters will follow a landing on Mars and is expected to return an unprecedented level of coverage throughout the entry, descent, and landing of NASA's Phoenix Mars lander on May 25th. We will have diagnostic information from the top of the atmosphere to the ground that will give us insight into the landing sequences, said David Spencer, Deputy Project Manager at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, JPL. Such information is very valuable and could help deal with landing problems and lead to improved designs for future landers. Yes, this is a very important mission. Launched on August 4th, 2007, the Phoenix lander is aiming for a site further north than any previous mission to Mars. There, once there, the lander will use its robotic arm to sample the surface for soil and ice to analyze, as well as scan for conditions that could support microscopic life. The three orbiters, NASA's Mars Odyssey, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO, and Europe's Mars Express are maneuvering to be in the right place at the right time when the Phoenix enters the Martian atmosphere at more than 12,750 miles per hour. Even NASA rovers Spirit and Opportunity, currently exploring the Martian surface, have helped out by simulating transmissions from Phoenix to rehearse to rehearse the orbiter's operations for the big day. On that day, Odyssey will turn its robotic eyes from the heavens to point an ultra-high frequency antenna towards the descending Phoenix lander. A high-gain antenna will stream information back to Earth as Odyssey watches Phoenix slow itself through heat shield friction, a parachute, and then firing descent rockets. That allows the lander to hit the Martian surface on three legs at just 5.4 miles per hour. The MRO, the MRO and Mars Express will start recording Phoenix transmissions as backup data about 10 minutes before landing. Until then, all three orbiters are scoping out Mars for a good landing site for the Phoenix lander. Yes, Mars is part of, is part of humankind's future. Yes, it is. It is part of the future.